Shalom Kharim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very eventful day today. Uh, Jens Stoltenberg from the United, uh, Na excuse me, NATO, the commander of the, the NATO forces there, uh, announcing, uh, Secretary General that is, announcing 300,000 troops being put on high alert, as they're saying, Russian aggression. I'm a little baffled by the Russian aggression part. I mean, if, is there anything that we might look at this and say, Russian aggression, wait a minute, who started doing the major buildup? Who began to break the rules and put their forces there on Russia's border, European border? I think it was NATO, if I'm not mistaken. That's what happened in Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, and even this whole issue about Ukraine. This is where everybody brings up the issue. Oh, the Russians, they came and invaded Ukraine. No, they never invaded Ukraine. You know, does anybody forget that it was Yukonovich who was a pro-Russian president that actually called Russian military to rescue him from a CIA-backed CIA coup? Oh, by the way, Jens Stoltenberg is also saying there is a great bit of propaganda going on in the European Union by the Russians. Hmm, must be people like, well, you know, anybody that is not biased towards NATO must be propaganda. I don't know, maybe we're falling on their radar, not making them very happy because we keep exposing what they're doing. Like in the case where uh, you had, um, what was his name, Barack Obama. Yeah, you know, the guy that said he's going he's gonna to have to take and... Um, Put a whole lot more tanks and troops over there on Russia's border because Putin said he's going to build 40 more ICBMs. Putin never said anything about building 40 ICBMs until we had already documented all the NATO troop movement, tanks and everything else going over on the border. Now suddenly we have this new big huge buildup that Jens Stoltenberg is talking about. And by the way, if you remember about what was it about a week, week and a half ago, we had uh, the Croatian uh, parliament member on Ivan Pinar, who was telling us that coming back from uh, Brussels, the Croatian prime minister announced suddenly to his parliament there, we are sending our troops over to the Russian border to deal with the Russian aggression. And he asked him, we haven't voted on this. No answer. No comment. No answer. We're sending our troops and they're going to do a draft to bring more soldiers in because they need to do. Why do they have to have a draft? Well, now we know. Jens now tells us they're going to send 300,000 NATO troops on the border with Russia just to really agitate the situation even more. So I don't think it's so much a Russian aggression as it is a NATO aggression. But as I mentioned not too long ago, and maybe it is kind of fair to take a, a, a look at this again, what did this all get started with to begin with? Well, it's that 10 regions of the world. You remember those there? Russia back here in 1973, they were going to get part for their region. Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Belarus, Poland, Ukraine, Serbia, Moldova, all those places there. Oh, well, oh, I'm sorry, Russia. Uh, Suddenly, NATO decided, you're not getting all of that. Now, I think what you'll get now is we're going to take all that from you. All the ones that you were going to be part of your sector, we'll take away and we'll let you have Ukraine. Then suddenly the CIA kind of turns that all around and says, oh, nope, we're going to take Ukraine as well. And they were going to get Mongolia. Mongolia got taken away from them. But as I should caution and say to you, the NATO issue to begin with is evil all the way around. I don't care who is involved, not NATO, but the um, New World Order agenda is evil all the way around. Doesn't matter who's involved. If it's Vladimir Putin, if it's Ian Stoltenberg, Barack Obama, anybody else in the world, it is nothing but a major mess. And that's exactly what's happening. And of course, don't forget, we see right down here in Turkey here, this is why Erdogan's always kind of peeved off. He was going to be part of the European group. Maybe that's why they had all the refugees go running up into there. They took that away from him too. And so they've been messing around with Russia, with Putin, and with Erdogan. Now Erdogan's stuck over here and he's got to fight it out with the Saudis. And that's why you see him sucking up to the United States and he sucks up to Russia too. Because see, they didn't expect Russia to step in there to do anything about Syria. I've really been wondering if Russia didn't do that because they wanted to pay NATO back for taking Ukraine, which they haven't fully 
got Ukraine. There's still a war going on over there and a problem for them. And of course, they say the Russian troops are inside of Ukraine. I agree, they are. I agree. More and more. Now, let, well, let me clarify that. Russia has sent all the military equipment that they need over there, and they have sent, as they call it, quote-unquote, volunteers. I've always pointed that out. It's no different than the United States. Let me share something with you that's going on, though. Just over there for an example, all right? Here we have right here, this is on uh, Donbass with Texas. That's the our American, it's, you're, not, you're not looking at, uh, this is not Tex here. But Tex here is just, uh, just the other day, he's there on the front lines, and I want you to see the subtitles here and what he says that, that's happening right here. Watch what he says here. On the other side, there's an American flag. They're whispering because it's kind of quiet there. Amerikansky. Ukrainian is a bit further. See? All right. Now, wait a minute. Let me back up just a little bit. I want you to see this again. This, this is text right here that you're seeing here. All right. Ukrainian flag. He says, dark, you can't see it. He's going to say that in just a second here. There is a Zavonka. You, you could see an American flag. On the other side, there is an American flag. Okay, Ukrainian is a bit further. The American flag is closer to the front line than the Ukrainian flag. Okay, wait a minute. Now... America's all been out of shape because they say that Russia's inside of Ukraine. They're fighting for the Don, uh, Donetsk People's Republic there or the Luhansk People's Republic. Uh, the different groups there that have broken away from Ukraine. And, the, and you know, you can't blame the people from breaking away. One, as we mentioned before, the New World Order, which I am dead set against. I, like I say, I don't care if it's Putin or anybody else is in it. Well, they took everything away from Putin anyway, right? They took all these other countries. He was going to get all this part of Europe here. They took all that away from him, and they gave it back over to the European Union side, and they also did uh, Erdogan a little wrong as well. Now, inside sources tell me that Erdogan was going to get, be a major player in the New World Order as long as he did all the dirty work for them. But uh, he's not very happy because at that time his major role was going to be controlling the European Union section there. But as I say here, my speculation on this, he got kicked out of the EU section and that's why he can't get nobody to let him in. Then he got stuck down here with the Saudis to fight over all that area there. And he already knows that the Saudis are a bunch of lazy guys down there, make a lot of money and all they need is a bunch of slaves to take care of them and that's the way they work. Their, their side of the story. At any rate, though, so there is an American flag on the front lines, and so the, you know, everybody's complaining the Russians are in eastern Ukraine. Well, we see that the Americans are there on the western side. And I can show you video after video of Americans actually fighting over there. I didn't take the time to do that in here. Another issue going on over there in eastern Ukraine. Take a look at, <clears throat> take a look at this video right here. These guys just sitting here in front of their car there. Uh, this is eastern Ukraine in Donetsk. It is a no-fly zone, according to the Minsk agreements there, but pay close attention to your screen right here. Here it comes. Oh, my gosh, what do you know? That's a Sukhoi 24. Yes, Sukhoi 24. But that is not a Russian Sukhoi. That is a Ukrainian Sukhoi. Tell me they're not getting ready for war. They're getting ready for war, and they're going to hit Russia, and they're going to hit Russia very very hard. All right, so Ian Stoltenberg talks about the tensions and talks about the Russian aggression, but we're seeing just the opposite. And again, it's not here to take up for Russia because, like I said, New World Order, I don't like either side of it. But what they're doing is they're fighting for who's going to get what land to rule, what part of the world, and, you know, for all their little comrades. And so I guess they just want more land for the European Union, so they're fighting over here for that. But at the same time, they're battling for. What is it, Ukraine? I mean, what did Putin say over and over and over here in these times here? And I didn't realize this was over dealing with the New World Order at the time. I just thought it was Putin trying to fight for his own survival. He says, you're not taking our interests into consideration. And he keeps saying this over and over and over. And I'm going to put together a, a big news piece on this for you eventually so you can see all the New World Order talk that was done in those interviews. And I never realized it until I started seeing this with the maps. That's what he was talking about. They're not, they're not treating him fair in this New World Order project. 
And so they keep taking land, keep taking more and more land, and now they're taking Ukraine. Well, he said enough's enough. That's why he took, that's why he took Sevastopol. That's why he took Crimea, Sevastopol being the capital there. He took it intentionally because and according to their New World Order plans, it was his in the first place. And then he knew he'd have to just fight for Ukraine. All right, so this is what it's all about. But the thing that irritates me is NATO is putting the American people in the United States of America at risk of a nuclear war all for what? For Ukraine? Are you serious? I mean, Yanukovych is the, really the true president of that country, and that man, well, you know, they had peace with Russia. And they can't be satisfied enough. They want to take Ukraine as well. I mean, just like put Yakanovich back in there and let, and let the people decide for themselves who's going to be the president there. Let them do it democratically. Why did the CIA have to come in there, stick their big nose into it, and overthrow everything? I mean, this is absolutely insane, guys. Absolutely insane. All right, now, NATO Russian tensions move to the Balkans with military drills. So it just keeps heating up everywhere. You know, Russia dislikes uh, Montenegro's policy of increasing ties with NATO and the EU. There have also been arrests in Montenegro and Serbia over a suspected plot to topple outgoing Montenegro Prime Minister Milo uh, Dekanovic. Uh, in addition, a large arms cache was found near the family home of the Serbian Prime Minister Alexander uh, Vucic on Saturday. You know, all right, now th this is just some things that you see going on there. All right, now another thing as well, and this here, you know, I, I mentioned to you guys, what, about a week or so ago, they were talking about these, these drills that were happening in Russia, uh, you know, about... Um, uh, this was the drills, listen to this. in early October shows Russians taking part in four-day-long emergency and civil defense drills across the country. Some 40 million people ultimately participated in what was the biggest test okay. of its Okay, when I first began to speak about this back in uh, early October there, it's been several weeks ago now, that Russia, that there were 40 million people involved in these drills for nuclear war, nuclear disaster. Do you know how many people actually made it look like I was just kind of like an idiot for even saying that? And I think we beat the mainstream media at bringing this out, and a lot of people just thought we were out of our minds. And you are watching on your screen the very actual footages of their drills that they were doing inside of Russia. And of course, it wasn't just getting them down in the silos and stuff. This is every aspect of preparing for a nuclear war is what Russia was doing. And so, yes, they were preparing for that. And it's on Russian state television, as you can see right here. This is Russia 1, or Russia 24, excuse me. Uh, still Russia 1, uh, but Channel 24 here. And that's exactly what they were doing. So, again, as I state, what they're doing here in Europe, all over Ukraine, is putting, it is putting not only the people of Europe in harm's way, but it is putting Americans in harm's way of a nuclear war because Russia, they don't have the means that I'm aware of to really go head to head with NATO. Now, NATO says that they, have, they can deploy faster. Yes, Russia does have a very powerful military. They do have some advantages on their side as well, but NATO is definitely not playing games either, and NATO has a tremendous force as well, as Putin has stated. So, so this is what's irritating me. And then I'm showing you, I see the evidence of what NATO is doing. And they say that Russia is provocative. Oh my gosh, please give me a break. Um, now I'm going to come, I need to take you guys back to Pachinik here in a minute, but let, let me take you to something else here. So let me first go over here. There's something I wanted to share with you just to give you an idea of what is going on. Uh, all over the place. Two people here already happened as one very, very insightful information that this man brings out here. Uh, by the way, and I sent him a message, he hasn't responded yet. He speaks about a huge convoy of trucks there on the Ukrainian-Polish border. Uh, and the, the trucks are very similar the way they are marked as you go down. I saw the video footage of this. Uh, it's all like a dark greenish color. I'm wondering if that's military uh, trucks. 
I can't say for sure. sure. Of course, more convoys going down to Turkey. Uh, and uh, this one here as well, news footage shows uh, that Turkish troops and military convoy have reached uh, Gaz uh, Gaziantep. Uh, and I'm not, and there's the troops right there, just so you can see what he's talking about when he says troops there. But I'm really wanting to look at the uh, couple of things that he shows here. Here's the one right here. Ukrainian, Canadian, Lithuanian, Polish troops have started the multinational Maple Arch 2016 exercise in Lviv, in the Lviv region inside of Ukraine. So NATO is exercising with a non-NATO member state. What you just saw just a moment ago, right? Right here. What does he say? Let me put it on the screen. Okay, so you can see it big enough. You could see an American flag. Is it exercise or is it right there on the front lines fighting with the Ukrainian soldiers instead? So who is the one raising the tensions here? That's what I'm wanting to, that's what I'm wondering, okay? Who is really the one raising the tensions to start with. Okay, photos also show Ukrainian troops and other military vehicles in Avin, uh, Fra Fra Frank Frankenvitsk, Ukraine. All right, let's take, let's take a closer, well, it's kind of hard to see it. By the way, if this is the one I looked at the other day, I think if I remember, it was like 20 something tanks uh, that, were, that were going on there. And that, let's just take a quick look uh, this is on this is November 6 yesterday November 6 all right so let's take let's let's pop it in there and let's run right over to Ukraine so you can see whereabouts this is back out so we get a decent picture there again that's the that's the western part of Ukraine here is where it's at on your border here closer to Slovakia, Slovakia Hungary Romania uh, those areas there everything has been starting off in there I've seen several convoys already coming out of that area there headed to the east there. Again, another one, long column of tanks loaded on a freight train and uh, another, this is a separate one altogether. Uh, this is the one that I saw the other day. I counted on there. You have to really look and do some serious close looking there. There were 25 tanks on that train car right there headed to eastern Ukraine. You don't tell me they're not getting ready for a war. And this is not even a NATO state. But they're obligated to Ukraine because why? Well, they toppled it. CIA toppled it, and that's something they got to do. Now, just to be fair here, now we have it right here. Also, in Russia, a huge convoy here. Let's take a look at where this is at in Russia here. This is Russia also responding to what's going on. So they're sending as well. They are also sending in tanks as a response but let's see where Russia is doing theirs at. That's outside of Moscow there. And they're sending their tanks. Looks like they already had snow over there. And they may have. We've been, I know here we're going below zero now here. I say below zero, below freezing. And Celsius is below zero, five degrees below zero right now here in the Czech Republic. So it's a very little light snow that they got there just recently. And that's not unusual. So, uh, and they're just to the west of Moscow. As you can see, Moscow right here to the west. Where are they headed down? Either Belarus or maybe they're going to the south towards Ukraine's border. Russia knows what's going on as well, guys. See, I'm wanting you to see some of this here because I want you to see just how serious it is. Now, let me, another, another uh, uh, friend here, uh, Mikhail, he's another good one there about bringing out some of this information. Um, and let's see, what is it? Uh, they, again, in Ukraine, uh, Mikolo, uh, Miko, Mikolaev, host tactical logistic training course conducted by UK military instructors, Ukraine, inside of Ukraine. Again, he shows all these things that are going on uh, as well. Both the opening ceremonies of the Russian, Serbia, and Belarusian exercise, Russia doing their exercise in Belarus, uh, and they, they're calling all of their exercises the Brotherhood. Okay, it is a serious situation, and it's only getting worse day by day by day. All right, now, quickly, let me go back over here. I want to share with you uh, one last concluding thought here. Steve Pachinik, I started following him because I wanted to be able to keep up with what this man's putting out. And there was something that he did in the video the other day. I was sharing with my wife today about this here. And she asked me, she said, have you shared what your thoughts are with the people about this? I said, this part, no, I didn't go I'm into it. Okay. Dr. Steve Pachinik. I wanted to talk to All you, right. the American people. 
Now, about the Steve next days. is wanting to talk to us about the next 100 days, all right? Let's take a look at what Steve's wanting I'm to stay, say, all right? I want to take you, he's, and this is the video I shared with you the other day. I'm going to take you, though, to the four-minute mark to start with. I have a feeling that Steve Pachinik, when he speaks on this here, he's trying to get the people not to rise up against the government. He talks about the soft coup, and he talks about the counter soft coup, and then he goes, of course, in the video about all the soft coups they've been involved in in the government, and he talks about all the elections that have been stolen and all the wrongs that have been done, and then he even has the audacity to go in there and says, anybody in power, there's always some some well, how would I put it in my words? Evil, some kind of crookedness in the government, and we're kind of supposed to deal with it. When you listen closely, what I notice that Steve is saying here is that Donald Trump is not going to win. He's preparing the people for Hillary Clinton to be getting the election. All he's basically doing is trying to comfort the American people and saying, you did a great job. You guys were supporting Bernie Sanders. He basically tells you he's a Bernie Sanders supporter. All right. It's in, 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 in plain words. He's not a supporter for Donald Trump. So as Yana pointed out the other day, Assange and what this man say are two different things. And I do believe that Assange was really a good man and he's trying to do what he believes is right. You notice he went from having brown hair to gray hair in just two years. And by the way, if they were really working with him, all of these agencies in America that were trying to do the counter coup and telling Obama to stand down and Hillary Clinton were dealing with her in our counter soft coup. If they were really working like that together, then why did they leave Assange in the Ecuadorian capital? I mean, not, not capital, but the Ecuadorian uh, embassy in England instead of getting the man out of there to freedom? No, they're not working together. Okay, that's just garbage that we're being fed. Now in here, you're going to see, he's basically going to say, thank you, Donald Trump, you did a nice job, your family sacrificed a lot, but he's also going to blame the American people for the coup that was done on the internet. I think it's in a roundabout way because why? They know they're gonna take your liberties, they're gonna take your freedoms, your freedom of speech on the internet is going to be shut down. Watch what he says. That you kill people or you go out and you create agitation profit. By the way, he is against violence raising up in America. And I agree with him on that. Okay, so I, I don't I don't disagree with everything that Mr. Pachenik says. So please don't get me wrong. And if he happens to listen to our program, again, I don't disagree with Steve Pachinik on everything he says. I just don't believe that he was really there for Donald Trump. And the whole part about this counter coup. I don't agree with him. I, I, I really don't believe that they did this. You have to remember, this man here, he is a doctor, Dr. Steve Pachinik. Let's make you feel better. He's a doctor, okay? He's a doctor of psychology, and he's also a specialist in regime change. So he has been sent here to the forefront to prepare you so that you will just sit back and say, oh, it's okay, Hillary made it. I'm sorry. Well, and quite honestly, I agree. What are you going to do about it? You can't do nothing. It would be insane for anybody to, do, to, to rise up with weapons. So I agree with him. It is stupid. Don't do something that stupid. If we've been dumb enough in America to allow all the nutcases get in, and you've got to go all the way back to Ronald Reagan. Everybody thinks Ronald Reagan's the greatest president that ever lived. No, Ronald Reagan was the one that took and they changed his uh, inauguration, faced the obelisk to let the people of the world know that the Jesuits now controlled America. That's where America made their mistake. You voted Ronald Reagan in and got your Jesuits in control. That's why the Catholic Church worked with Ronald Reagan to bring down the Soviet Union. All right? Now, listen to Steve Pachinik. Again, and fire in the streets and, and disrupt the everyday work life of America. What I mean by that is that we have been able, through the Internet, to disrupt any activities which are not beneficial to the Republic. Who determines that? Pretty much you do, the American public. And when the American public was disturbed by what they heard and saw. Did you notice what he said? The soft coup was done through the internet, and you do. They're blaming the American people. And they're not, he's not saying it out like that.
but they're setting up the American people to lose their freedom because we are the ones, you and I, I didn't get as much into this whole thing about Hillary Clinton. I mean, I've, I've definitely said my piece about it as well, no doubt about it. But the point is, he's blaming the American people for the soft coup. That's what this man's doing. And so we're going to pay the price. They're going to take the freedom of the Internet away. And you know how Russia was talking about making this new supercomputer and stuff like that that replaces the Internet so that they don't have to worry about being on the World Wide Web? I'm wondering if Russia's new Internet system isn't going to be the Internet world Internet system for the rest of the world as well. Just like BRICS. BRICS really is the new world order monetary system possibly that's what I've been told by inside source I cannot verify that but he says you never take down a the IMF when the US dollar crashes etc the IMF implodes on itself that they created BRICS as the beginning of the new monetary system for a global new world order I don't know if that's true or not but it is interesting to think about Okay, again, it doesn't put Putin in the best light in the world. As we would say, he's playing ball. Or has he really gone rogue, which the same insider told me he could have gone rogue and really is trying to fight against it. I don't know which one is which at this point. All right, listen some more here. Uh, with regards to Hillary and Bill Clinton and Podesta and Uma Abedin, they reacted appropriately. I want to thank the Trump family for having come forth and offered their services to this country. They didn't have to. They were, a not, they were not a political family. Not they a political a family. family. A lovely family of entrepreneurs. Do, do you notice he's telling the Trump family goodbye? You know, I want to thank the Trump family for coming forth. They didn't have to. They put, he's going to tell you, they put their father out to ridicule and everything. But he's, you know, you know okay, he wasn't the guy. All right? The man is preparing you as a psychologist, letting you know Trump is not selected to be president. All right, go listen to it. I'm going to put the link in there. Let me go to 545. I want you to see what he says here. Be part of any hierarchical system, no matter where you go. A certain amount of corruption is inherent in a system where people have to rule other people. What really begs the issue is the amount of corruption. With the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton individuals, we had so much corruption that it basically undermined the republic. Obama was part of that corruption. The Bushes were part of that corruption, as Bill Clinton was. So in effect, you have to think of this revolution in a timeline between the 1990s and 2016. So it's just, it's not all of Hillary's fault. The election, and then the Bushes came back in, stole their election in Florida. And now we the people are taking away that right of the Clintons or anyone else to determine our fate. I want to thank you all on behalf of myself and those of us who serve this country to continue to serve the country. Still, we're being coupled in together along with the coup. And I want you to understand that come November 8th, it will be a peaceful change of administrations. And whatever happens, remember, the revolution is not all over. Democracy you still get a little a bit of hope. Vigilance and dissension. That's part of what makes us so great. But I caution you, do not express this in an, a hysterical fashion or in an agitated way. Let us peacefully go forth, express our dissent, and vote accordingly. And hopefully we can win this time. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. America, and God bless you. Well, we've been checked out. Oh my gosh, guys, this is just terrible. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I mean, guys, you know, I don't, I know, I don't have all the answers. But if that's not a two, two, two things that I notice here, if that's not saying thank you, Donald Trump, you did a great job, we appreciate it. Hillary Clinton's going to be the president. All right. If that is not him saying goodbye to Donald Trump, if that is not Pachinik grooming you and preparing you 
calm down, don't do anything except Hillary Clinton as your president. If that's what, I mean, that's as plain as day to me. Maybe I'm wrong. You guys tell me what you think. And then ask yourself the question too, why is the guy doing everything in black and white? There's got to be a psychological factor to that. Is that, show, is that a psychological thing that tells you we see things in black and white? I don't know. You tell me. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom. Or ain't shalom. There is no peace.